<clears throat> mm hmm. Huh? Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Is this scenario familiar to you? These are based on my personal experience as a student. And in fact, when I became a teacher, studying smart became a convenient advice to give those hardworking students who do not see proportionate increase in results. Sounds familiar? Well, then this video is for you. There are three must do to studying smarter. And by must do, we mean that this must literally be carried out before anything else. So while these pointers may seem commonsensical, do hear us out as we explain the real value and purpose of these actions. Also, we will be sharing one bonus tip at the end of the video as a reward to those who stick through to the end and also the rare few who are confident that they have mastered the three must-dos that we are going to share. So now, let's get started! Before we can get into the details, I find one of the important areas that is missing is that there is a poor understanding of what studying smart actually means. We need to understand that working hard and smart are not mutually exclusive, meaning that it is definitely possible to work both hard and smart. Hence, our definition for working smart is as such. And working smart measures the deliberate attempt to yield progress with every unit of time and effort put into task. And you can quickly realize that this is not just limited to studying and it can be applicable to everything that you do, be it uh, learning of a new skill or handling a tough project at the next time when you are at work. So now that we are clear of the definition, let's jump into the first must-do of studying smart. Must-do number one is definitely to do your homework mindfully. Oh, come on, I did not come here to be neck at. I'm sure your parents and teachers are hounding you to do your homework. Before you fast forward or close this video entirely, hear us out. Okay, so there's a slight difference in what we are trying to say here, and the keyword here is mindfully. So homework serves two major purposes. The one that is more known is that homework ensures that the learner recall important concepts and content taught in class. That is the knowledge portion of it. Those with superb memory can skip out this whole process by memorizing the content perhaps just the very night before the test. However, the greater purpose of homework is actually to help learners develop skills such as application skills, problem solving skills, comprehension skills while practicing the questions in the homework. And these skills cannot be taught and can only be mastered through deliberate practice. Therefore, homework becomes an indispensable component to learning. Right? And because the great importance of homework, teachers can get overzealous and sometimes bombard our students with extraordinary amount of homework. So what do you do in these type of situations? Our suggestion will be to do as many questions as you can mindfully. Going back to the definition of starting smart, make sure that you are learning. In other words, making progress as you are working through each question in your homework. Here are three areas which you can check for progress. And number one will be the deeper understanding of the concept, like, oh, so that's what it means. Or it can be stronger skills, like, oh, so that's how we solve these type of questions. Or in fact, one of the most important one is to have a better gauge of your standard. I can solve these type of questions now, right? Okay, now going back to the power of work, for those portions that you cannot finish, just let your teacher know about it. Most teachers should be understanding enough to give you a time extension. If your teacher insists that you must absolutely finish this piece of work, it usually has some deeper meaning into it. For example, that this set of questions coming out in the upcoming test, or you in particular, needs that very practice itself. So if you are struggling to complete the task well, your fellow classmates can manage it, it means that you need more guidance and support. So look for your teacher for a private consultation, or head over to our website and submit your questions there so the community can give you some advice and some support. So what we are trying to say here is when it comes to homework, quality before quantity. Now let's move on to the second must do, which is to learn from your corrections. This is one of the smartest things that you can do because you just have the clear evidence that you messed up that question. So regardless whether it is due to serious conceptual error or simple carelessness, if you can make the mistake once, then the probability of you making the same mistake again is very, very high, especially if you don't learn and correct it. Most often, the correction that you are doing is due to a mistake that is made in a homework or in a test. And as mentioned in the homework segment, each question that you are practicing or you see in the test 
are deliberately designed to be that way because they address misconceptions or question types that are found in higher stake exams. So imagine going into O levels or A levels and you see a similar question and you can only recall what you have written wrong, but you cannot recall the correct answer. That is a very, very crappy feeling that you will never want to have. And yes, been there, done that. So if you haven't felt this before, you don't have to if you just simply learn from your mistakes. And with that said, let's move on to the third must do to study smart. And our third must do to study smart will be to learn as much as you can in class. <clears throat> all teachers are professionally trained to engage students of all types and therefore there should be no boring teachers ever. Said no one, even we teachers have our fair share of boring lessons. One more important thing for you to note is that nobody likes boring lessons and definitely not the teacher him or herself, but sometimes it happens. Most often it's because of the dynamics between the class and the teacher, but sometimes it can be due to the topic itself because some topics are naturally more abstract and more intense. But regardless, lesson time is something that you cannot run away from. You have to be in class for that number of hours, that number of minutes. So if you can absorb 90% of the content and tips that were shared, you only have to catch up with the remaining 10% outside of class time. However, if you were to switch off entirely or give up, then you have to spend the extra time to catch back everything by yourself, without help. And in most cases, this means that a disproportionately more time and effort is needed. In fact, this often is so difficult that many students give up entirely and they blame it over to that they cannot do the subject, my teacher cannot teach, or I tried so hard and it did not work. So study smart, pay attention in class, exploit the opportunity to ask questions, do practices, and stay mindful. Thank you to those who are still here with me. You are definitely up for success since you can put up with such a long video. So here's our bonus tip for you which is to self-assess constantly. Since our central theme for today's discussion is really on progress, the best measure for progress comes when you have a good gauge of your current standards. By keeping your finger on the pulse, you can be more effective and efficient in addressing your area of weakness. This is especially important for moments where you suddenly have a period of time where you can do some revision. And most students will actually just grab the nearest assessment book or practice paper and they will complete it as practice. And more than often, they do not even mark their own work. So what does that mean? It means that while you keep practicing and practicing, you gain that false sense of confidence that you can do such questions. But in fact, your answer may not be exactly correct. Oh. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect, right? In fact, it's not true. Practices forms habits. And if you're gonna keep practicing the wrong things, you're gonna bring all these wrong concepts into your exams. And that's not a good thing, right? So with that said, self-assess constantly whether you are making progress and what are the areas that you need help with and channel your time and effort into that. And with that, you can ensure that you are maintaining an optimum progress with every unit of effort and time put into revision. With that said, we come to the end of our video. Let's round up by emphasizing that working smart is actually a mindset. It is this mindset that focuses on progress rather than just mere effort. And with that said, we would like to caution against one type of practice that certain type of students will do, which is to not do anything until they have decided that, okay, this is the best action for me to take. In other words, what we're trying to say is that do not waste time waiting or deciding on the best approach to spend your effort on, since time is ticking and if you are not progressing, you are not starting smart. So do not hold on to practice and keep thinking that you need to come up with the best strategy before you can start. Start doing something and figure it out along the way. That would be the best advice that we can give you. So drop in the comments below on how this video has helped you or have gotten you into trouble with your teachers because you did not complete their homework. Share with your families and friends. If you are a teacher, share it with your class so that they will do your homework, do your corrections and pay attention in class and do not give them too much homework, yeah? Like and subscribe if you haven't already and we will see you in the next video.